Hello everyone, Husky Capital welcomes you with a hold recommendation featuring a 12 month price target of $97.32. Representing only a 4.7% upside. Now Polaris is a dominant force in the power sports industry. Not only does the firm have a strong presence in the North American market, but geographically Polaris reaches over 120 countries worldwide with 20% of sales coming from international countries back in 2022. The firm is also divided into three segments, off-road, on-road, and marine. The firm is directly focused on operational efficiency, leveraging vertical acquisitions and strategic partnerships to enhance supply chain activities and adopt consumer needs. Following three successful transactions, Polaris is able to increase manufacturing operations by directly buying out a supplier, manufacturer, and a competitioner, competitor. Um, Tightened 
consumer behavior is becoming more apparent as elevated interest rates persist. Consumers are increasingly cautious, tightening their budgets through reducing spending on leisure products and services. This necessitates a strategic response from Polaris in order to navigate this evolving landscape. Moreover, the rate of PCE growth and personal debt presented a real challenge. While inflation remains above pre-2020 levels, compared with increasing personal debt, this makes the economic environment more complex for players to maneuver through. Players' and profitability is highly correlated with market conditions as their products are consumer discretionary and often purchased through financing. With an alarming R squared of 0.98, we have high predictability, high predictability power that, of how players can perform under various conditions. This, firm, or this is evident that the firm has high dependency on ideal macroeconomic conditions to deliver strong performance. With that being said, players have seen high swings in their cost of goods. However, big picture, the firm has been able to weather out these events fairly well. We've only seen 110 base point increase in cost of goods as a percentage of revenue since we call it, along with a 6.5% revenue payer. Again, this shows financial resiliency even with unfavorable conditions. However, Polaris has felt the effects of hiking consumer budgets as we've seen over 20 day increase in the IO since pre COVID. We project that to level off in about 107 days as the industry continues to mature and the economy stabilizes. Players have become somewhat stagnant uh, due to their capital allocation goals and inventory fluctuations. We believe management's goals for both profitability and growth may be overly optimistic given the current environment. As players move towards EVs, we expect softened returns along with challenges faced from both existing power source players and new emerging EV firms. In order to remain competitive and meet their capital allocation goals, it is important for players to utilize sustainable practices as well as further their R&D. Moving on to risk, we identified many, but our top two concerns are R&D and investor attractiveness. For R&D, we expect peak ICE platform efficiency to be reached this decade. ICE platforms will assess C advantages through cost, design, and technology features such as suspension control. As of now, we believe Polaris has a great head start with their Ranger platform. It exhibits terrific power and range when compared to peers. It is important for players to stay ahead in this regard. For investor attractiveness, our mid to long term outlook on both players and the industry is slow growth reliant on macroeconomic indicators. We believe investors may be more attracted to other areas of the market where they can return or where, where they can expect a higher return for their dollar. We grabbed our price rate $97.32 based on the 85 and 50% weight of the share of cash flow growth about weight valuation. We selected this weight based off the future free cash flow of the firm, industry maturity, and lack of pure play competitors within the industry. Our football field analysis summarized our valuation approaches. We connected a relative valuation of players to comparable companies from the power supply industry. We select these firms based off their operating segments, capital structure, growth outlooks, and profitability. After, our team applied an industry standard PE multiple of 12 lakhs to estimate the firm's value. After detailed research, our team applied an 8% discount for a more clear post COVID 19 valuation while factoring a slight PE above current, current PE levels. This led us to apply valuation of $106.50. In our discount path analysis, we predicted by your horizon to ensure accuracy and, you, and to account for unique macro, recovery from unique macro conditions. Our base case scenario anticipates a soft landing in the U.S., which challenges like we could demand and cost inflation coming into profitability. The assumptions underpinning our price here are as follows. One, volatility and working capital. More specifically, how quickly players can live up to our inventory. Two, fluctuation in commodity prices. <coughs> commodity prices. This will directly Increased operational costs coming into margins. Three, an average annual growth rate, which is an average annual growth rate about 4%, which is in line, in, in line with the total adjustable market, showcasing Polaris' ability to grow in sync with the market as a whole. To stress that our intrinsic valuation, we utilize Monte Carlo solution, which replicated over 10,000 different scenarios using different variances of revenue growth, R&D, cost of goods sold, and the inventory turnover. Despite various cause by selection variables, over 35% of the outcomes yield a share price within 10% or a price target for Polaris, further supporting our cost toll recommendation for the firm. In summary, Polaris has shown strong financial resilience amongst unfavorable macro conditions, but needs to take a tempered approach with the investment of the profitability. The future of the firm is dependent on management's capital allocation strategy to grow organically while maintaining profitability. Thank you, and we will open it up for questions.
So $97 price target, 4% upside. The stock was, I think, 130, 140, six, seven months ago in the summer. I would argue the macro environment's probably gotten a little better since then. So what do you think has changed, or where was the market wrong, or how can it get back to that place? Yeah, absolutely, that's a great point. So Polaris has been trading at the 50 to week high at like around 130. Um, as you said, macro conditions have slightly improved, but with that being said, we're still seeing uh, issues such as consumer tightening and budgets. I mean, we're directly feeling that right now and uh, from a consumer perspective, although the economy is slowly recovering. You mentioned three different divisions and markets, and historically, um, Polaris was only an off-road provider. Uh, so when you look at this, so when you look at the company now, you know, at one point in their time, they were pretty much just an inventor, right? Now they've been an acquirer. How do you think about that for the long term? And you mentioned the markets. I think you characterize them as somewhat more mature. So the attractiveness for this company, how do you think about it as an organic grower versus a grower by m and I think at this point in the industry, it's very mature, it's very saturated. To expand uh, market growth, it's going to need to be inorganically. I mean, we're seeing a very different growth at 5.5%, which the economy on average has grown to 3% historically. So to grow within an industry like the power sports industry, it needs to be inorganic. Similar to like uh, power companies like Audi and BMW, at this point, they're established players, you cannot enter, it's very difficult to enter this market, and the only way you can grow is either by innovation or inorganic. that question. You mentioned a little bit briefly about their international expansion and I thought it was pretty positive. Just curious if it's not if the market here in North America is saturated, just curious about if you have done more work about their uh, international expansion. So like you said the bulk of their sales are in the US and you can say North America as well. Um, it's tough to say, but over as they move towards EVs, I think it'll be a bit better, um, especially with environmental regulations going on. You know, the EU is planning stuff for about 2035, as well as California. Um, as for keeping expansion uh, going internationally, um, I know they have like Players Adventures, their program. They're doing rides for people all over the world. You know, they're spreading their their brand image more. They're giving people ride experiences. That could be one way to keep growing. Um, yeah, kind of get on like my older point or my previous point a little bit. You mentioned there's already a lot of dominant players in the industry. We are seeing you know slight growth in, in that internationally. I, I believe it was about a six percent year over year growth that I see on seen on average. Uh, but as I kind of mentioned, there's a lot of dominant players. Kind of internationally known, they're a huge player. It's very difficult to take market share. We will see, but we will see growth. But that's just growing past the economy. Yeah, are you referring to the discount password or the relative valuation? I'm referring to both. Did you get different results and how did you decide? Yeah. So, for a relative valuation, we use a PE multiple of 11 X to estimate the firm value of $106. And then for our discount cash flow, we, our price there was $95.66 based on a 9.5 exit multiple. And we used an 85 and 50% blend between those two to get a price target. For us, we are thinking at least 
least a 10, if not 20% upside or downside to recommend either one of those. But we didn't reach that at all, so we felt that a hold was appropriate. Um, yeah, I can definitely add on top of that. And to support a buy recommendation, we would need a substantial upside. And I think a lot of people are probably, you know, adding a premium to their uh, multiples, and that's what's really driving the recommendation. And as far as like a sell recommendation, I mean, the, the company's fundamentally sound. There's nothing wrong with Polaris. They have good operating, uh, operating operations. They're just highly tied to the macroeconomic conditions. I mean, we see a beta of 1.61. That's just a testament to how correlated they are to the market. But there's nothing substantially wrong, there's nothing that screams by either. Um, so there's no huge growth or upside. So that's why we thought a whole recommendation was appropriate. Maybe we could just stay on this slide for a minute. Um, that's a really high R squared. And so, I mean, can you just walk me through it a little bit? I know it's quarterly revenue is correlated with something. What is that something? And then, I mean, is this, once we get the PCE and CCI number, we know their quarterly revenue within a certain margin of error because we make a lot of money off that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I made sure I wanted to use data as far back as I could get as far as the GDP, PCI, uh, CCI, so consumer confidence index. I used a linear, a multi-linear regression with the variables of PCE, CP, GDP, and PCI against quarterly revenue for Blitz. And that's what output that um, that R squared of 0.98, it's all of those predictable powers with all those variables combined, not just in the benefit. Where they utilized 
the, their manufacturing abilities to increase their sales 